The ISS is cracking apart, costing $150 billion. SpaceX just revealed their genius trick that makes every competitor's plan worthless overnight. One Starship delivers more space than the entire ISS for just $10 million. But here's the insane part nobody saw coming. What if you launch 20 of them? Let's dive right in. Picture this. Right now, 250 miles above your head, astronauts are literally drinking filtered urine while floating in a metal tube that's cracking apart. The International Space Station isn't just aging gracefully. It's dying a slow, expensive death. And everyone knows it. Here's what's actually happening up there. The Russian Zvezda module, the part that keeps everyone breathing, has been bleeding precious air into the vacuum of space since 2019. We're not talking about a small leak you can patch with space duct tape. This is the life support nerve center slowly hemorrhaging the one thing you absolutely cannot live without in space. But wait, it gets worse. Just last month, a cargo ship arrived and immediately started pumping toxic fumes throughout the station. Astronauts scrambled to seal themselves in because whatever was floating around smelled like industrial spray paint. In space, where there's nowhere to run. And here's the kicker that'll blow your mind. After 25 years and $150 billion, astronauts still have to wedge themselves into storage cabinets just to sleep because this marvel of engineering doesn't even have proper beds. Does this sound like the future of space exploration to you? Now here's the part that should make taxpayers everywhere lose their minds. This floating disaster cost $150 billion. That's more money than most countries see in a decade. And what exactly did we get for that astronomical price tag? A cramped laboratory running on Windows 95-era computers that astronauts have nicknamed the Floating Plumbing Depot. I wish I was making this up. Half their time is spent unclogging waste systems and chasing down leaks in zero gravity. The other half? Trying to keep 1980s technology from completely shutting down. But here's where the story takes a dramatic turn. While NASA scrambles to find replacement solutions, throwing billions more at companies like Blue Origin and Axiom Space for stations that won't be ready until the 2030s, something extraordinary is already sitting on a launch pad in Texas. Something that makes every billion-dollar proposal look like ancient history. Something that's about to completely destroy the commercial space station market before it even gets started. Enter SpaceX's Starship. When people see this rocket for the first time, their brains literally cannot process what they're looking at. Humans crawling around it during tests look like ants on a skyscraper. And when it's fully fueled, that frosty layer you see, everything above that is basically empty space waiting to become your new home in orbit. But here come the numbers that don't make sense. The main living area alone gives you 1,000 cubic meters of space. The entire International Space Station, built over decades with the combined efforts of five space agencies, has 935 cubic meters. Stop and think about that for a second. One rocket, more space than a $150 billion space station. But wait, there's more. Elon Musk says launching this thing costs under $10 million. Some estimates put it at 20 million tops. So let me get this straight. For less than the cost of a single Hollywood blockbuster, SpaceX can deliver more living space than humanity's greatest space achievement? How is this even mathematically possible? The answer lies in the genius trick that's about to make every competitor panic. Traditional space stations are like building the most expensive house in history, then throwing away all your tools and never being able to fix anything. Every component of the ISS was launched once and abandoned in space forever. When something breaks, you're basically screwed. There's no coming home for repairs. Starship just broke that rule completely. Every single piece of this rocket comes back to Earth. The massive booster lands upright like something out of a sci-fi movie. The upper stage returns from orbit. If your space station develops problems, you don't abandon it like the ISS. You bring the entire thing back, fix it in a proper workshop on Earth, and launch it again. But here's the part that changes everything. Starship wasn't designed to be a space station. It was engineered to keep hundreds of people alive and comfortable during eight-month journeys to Mars. The livability features aren't add-ons. They're built into the core DNA of this machine. Think about this logically. 
If you can design a vehicle to keep people happy and healthy for eight months in deep space, what happens when you just park it in Earth orbit? You get the most luxurious space habitat ever built, and it happens almost by accident. Now, here's where things get really wild, and this is the part most people completely miss. Most of Starship's interior is currently filled with massive fuel tanks. Those tanks are essential for launch and landing, but here's the kicker. Once you're permanently parked in orbit, you don't need them anymore. Strip out those fuel tanks and suddenly you've unlocked 3,000 cubic meters of interior space. That's three times bigger than the entire International Space Station. You could comfortably house hundreds of people in there. But SpaceX isn't stopping at the current design. Future versions could stretch to 70 meters long, potentially offering 4,400 cubic meters of space. We're talking about orbital cities with workshops, greenhouses, recreation areas, maybe even zero-gravity sports courts. And here's the material advantage nobody talks about. The ISS is built from aluminum, lightweight but fragile. Starship uses stainless steel. This isn't just a different material choice, it's a completely different philosophy. Steel can take a beating from space debris, radiation, and extreme temperatures. It's easier to repair and way more durable long-term. Plus, it's dirt cheap compared to aerospace aluminum. But the real question everyone's asking is this. What if you don't stop at just one? If launching one Starship costs $10 million, here's the obvious question. Why not launch 20 or 50? Picture this scenario. A massive ring of connected Starships slowly rotating in orbit, creating artificial gravity through centrifugal force. Each module serves a different purpose. Living quarters in one, laboratories in another, manufacturing facilities, food production, recreation and sports, medical facilities. This isn't science fiction anymore. NASA actually considered this exact concept decades ago using space shuttle external tanks, but those were just hollow cylinders. Starship comes pre-equipped with life support, structural integrity, and advanced systems. The economics are so insane they almost seem fake. Traditional commercial space stations cost billions and take a decade to develop. You could build and launch an entire orbital city of 20 starships for less than $500 million. That's cheaper than most highway construction projects. But SpaceX has an even bigger advantage that makes this inevitable. They control the entire supply chain. Super heavy boosters provide the launch capability. Dragon capsules handle crew rotations. Starlink satellites ensure you never lose internet connection, even in space. It's a complete orbital ecosystem run by one company with one unified vision. So what's stopping them from actually doing this? Absolutely nothing. The technology exists today. The manufacturing capability exists. The launch infrastructure exists. The only question is when, not if. But here's where SpaceX's genius trick gets even more impressive. Remember those 33 engines that power this monster? They're not just any engines. They're Raptor 3s, and they're so advanced that when SpaceX first showed them to the world, competitors literally thought it was fake. The CEO of United Launch Alliance, Tori Bruno, publicly stated he couldn't believe the photos were real. The engine looked stripped down, like SpaceX had removed all the outer components. But they hadn't. This was the complete operational engine in all its glory. Here's what makes Raptor 3 absolutely revolutionary. It produces 280 tons of thrust, nearly 30% more than the original Raptor, while weighing 170 pounds less. How is that possible? SpaceX eliminated thousands of parts through advanced 3D metal printing, integrating multiple components into single pieces. But the real breakthrough? These engines no longer need external heat shields. Previous versions required thick protection plates because 33 engines running next to each other create incredible heat. Raptor 3 has built-in cooling channels 3D printed directly into the metal. It's like having air conditioning built into every component. This isn't just an engineering achievement. It's the foundation that makes orbital cities possible. When your engines are this reliable and this efficient, suddenly launching 20 starships doesn't sound crazy anymore. It sounds inevitable. Now here's the part that should make every NASA executive break out in cold sweats. While traditional space station companies are still drawing blueprints for facilities that won't be operational until the mid-2030s, SpaceX could have a functional Starship station orbiting Earth next year. 
Think about the timeline. The ISS might not even survive until 2030. Some experts, including Elon Musk, are saying 2027 is more realistic given the accelerating failures. That gives us less than three years to find a replacement. Blue Origin's Orbital Reef, still in development with no firm launch date. Axiom Space's modules, dependent on the dying ISS for initial assembly. Northrop Grumman's concept, still on paper with a price tag that would make governments weep. Meanwhile, SpaceX has already successfully caught a Starship booster out of midair with mechanical chopsticks. They've demonstrated the Raptor 3 engine. They've proven the manufacturing capability. The pieces aren't just coming together. They're already here. But here's the most shocking part. SpaceX might not even need permission to do this. Once Starship is operational for other missions, converting one into a space station is just a payload configuration change. No billion-dollar development programs. No decade-long approval processes. Just strip out the fuel tanks, install life support, and launch. The competition isn't just behind. They're competing against something that could be operational before they even finish their proposals. This is where the story gets brutal for everyone else in the space industry. Imagine spending five years and billions of dollars developing a revolutionary new smartphone, only to discover your competitor is selling something three times better for one-tenth the price. That's exactly what's happening right now. Blue Origin's Orbital Reef is projected to cost over $10 billion to develop and deploy. Axiom Space's commercial modules? Similar price range with longer timelines. Northrop Grumman's concepts? Even more expensive with delivery dates in the late 2030s. Then along comes SpaceX with a solution that costs less than $50 million total and could be operational years earlier. It's not even a fair fight anymore. It's a complete market disruption that makes every traditional approach instantly obsolete. But the panic goes deeper than just cost and timeline. These companies have built their entire business models around the assumption that space stations are expensive, complex, and take decades to develop. SpaceX just proved that assumption wrong with existing hardware. Wall Street is starting to notice. Investors are asking hard questions about space companies whose billion-dollar valuations are based on technologies that SpaceX has essentially made irrelevant overnight. How do you justify developing a Model T when someone's already mass-producing Teslas? The writing is on the wall. The ISS is dying. Traditional replacements are too expensive and too slow. And SpaceX is sitting on a solution that's bigger, cheaper, faster, and already proven. The only question left is, how long before everyone else admits they've been playing the wrong game entirely? So here we are. The ISS is cracking apart with billion-dollar band-aids, while SpaceX sits on a solution that's bigger, cheaper, and ready to launch tomorrow. This isn't just about replacing one space station. This is about fundamentally changing how humanity lives and works in space. But here's what really keeps me up at night. If SpaceX can make the impossible look routine with space stations, what else are they planning that we haven't even imagined yet? Because knowing Elon, this is just the beginning. The space race just became the space revolution. And honestly, I don't think most people realize how fast everything is about to change. What do you think happens when orbital cities become as common as skyscrapers? Drop your wildest predictions below, because in five years, one of us might be watching this video from orbit. If this blew your mind, you need to see what SpaceX is planning for Mars. Trust me, it makes orbital cities look simple. Hit that subscribe button and let's explore the future together. SpaceX just did something so crazy that NASA officials are calling emergency meetings. Ship 37's new Crab Claw technology isn't just different. It's so revolutionary that it could make NASA's entire refueling program obsolete overnight. But why is SpaceX keeping the real purpose secret from everyone, including their own team? Let's dive right in. Here's what NASA engineers saw that made them call emergency meetings at 2 a.m. When Ship 37's transport stand arrived at Mega Bay that morning, something was different. The Crab Claw system wasn't in any of NASA's blueprints. It wasn't in any aerospace textbook. 
It shouldn't have existed. But there it was. Four metallic arms that just solved the most dangerous problem in space exploration. And NASA? They had no idea SpaceX was even working on it. Think about trying to connect a garden hose while you're both falling down a cliff. That's orbital refueling, according to every space agency on Earth. NASA has spent over $2 billion developing massive robotic arms and complex docking systems. Technology so complicated, it requires millimeter-perfect alignment between two spacecraft hurtling through space at 17,500 miles per hour. SpaceX just proved all of that was unnecessary. Here's the mind-blowing part. While NASA's system needs perfect alignment, we're talking about the precision of threading a needle in a hurricane. SpaceX's crab claws can grab and adjust on the fly. Each arm moves independently, automatically compensating for the micro-movements that happen when two spacecraft try to connect in zero gravity. But why is NASA really panicking? It's not just about refueling one rocket. If SpaceX can refuel starships in orbit this easily, they don't just win the moon race. They completely rewrite the rules of space colonization. Remember when Ship 36 exploded in that spectacular fireball? Boeing would need 18 months to recover from that kind of failure. NASA's space launch system? They've been fixing minor issues for over a decade. SpaceX went from explosion to launch ready in exactly 40 days. Here's what most people don't understand about SpaceX's secret weapon. While other companies see explosions as catastrophic failures, SpaceX treats them as the world's most expensive data collection. Every piece of twisted metal, every failed sensor reading, every millisecond of flight data gets fed into AI systems that can spot patterns human engineers might miss for years. The morning after Ship 36 explosion, SpaceX engineers weren't mourning. They were already designing Ship 37's improvements. That crab claw system, it wasn't supposed to exist until ship 40 or later. But the explosion data revealed something unexpected about fuel transfer dynamics during ascent. Something that forced SpaceX to accelerate their timeline by two years. NASA executives are calling this impossible engineering. But here's the twist. SpaceX didn't just recover from failure. They used it to leapfrog ahead of everyone else by decades. We're not just behind, we're playing a completely different game. That's a direct quote from an unnamed NASA official to industry insiders. The Artemis program's entire refueling timeline just became obsolete overnight. Let's talk numbers for a second. NASA's current plan requires 